Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about a recent place that is in use, that is Camp David, which can be very, very helpful for UPSC prelims examination, especially the places in use section from where the generally question is asked from India as well as outside the world. So, what is the Camp, Camp David? What is its significance? And the most important event that has happened at Camp David was the signing of Camp David Accords in the 1978s. We are going to discuss about that also because this accord is one of the most significant accord that has been signed in the history of Israel-Palestine conflict. So first of all, why this place is news as of now? So recently it has been announced by the White House that the President Joe Biden of United States of America is going to meet his counterparts that is the President of Japan as the Prime Minister of Japan as well as the President of South Korea. And this is basically Camp David is a site that is used by American presidents every now and then and historically as well to host foreign, foreign leaders and that is the continuation of tradition that we are seeing here as well. Most famously as we have discussed, the most famous meeting that has taken place at Camp David was by President Jimmy Carter of USA in 1978 along with the leaders of Israel. When you have uh, Menachem Begin, that is a Prime Minister of Israel, meeting with the President of Egypt, that was Anwar Sadat, and thus we have the signing of Camp David Accord. So, despite, however, the hostilities that historically has been between the South Korea and Japan, the two Asian nations, this meeting is basically going to take place, and both countries are trying to increase the warmth of the relationship, especially in the wake of Russia-Ukraine war. So. If we talk about the Camp David Accord, uh, Camp David basically, so first we can see that we know that the two regional rivals that were Israel and uh, uh, Palestine, so hostility was prevalent between them, but a historic framework agreement that is Camp David Accord was signed at this place and thus because of this historic agreement, the two leaders also were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in the year 1978 and thus similar like there was that time it was meeting of between the US, Israel and Egypt. At this time, the meeting is going to take place between the US, Japan and South Korea. So of late, there has been an attempt at developing closer relations between the two Asian countries in spite of the historic disagreement that, ha that we have seen between the Japan and South Korea. So what is Camp David actually and where it is situated? So first of all, if you look at the location, Camp David is situated just 96 kilometers from the Washington, that is the capital city of USA, slightly toward the northern side as we can see from here. And originally it was built as a camp for the federal employees and their families that was completed in 1938 as a part of New Deal. Now if you have read world history, you know that New Deal was a very significant attempt that was made by the United States politician and economist to make sure that the effect of Great Depression can be minimized because this program basically we talk about New Deal, this program was meant to have a fiscal stimulus in the economy during the times of Great Depression of 1930s and this period was basically a period of depression where there was mass or large scale unemployment and poverty in the early 20th century. And thus the New Deal in response to the economic crisis also saw many public works being undertaken to generate employment, to put money into the economy, to generate employment as well as aid to the poor. So if we talk about now that the history of Camp David, so earlier basically today we know that Camp David is being used as a alternative site uh, or as a recreational site by the US President. So before US President up to the Franklin Roosevelt, he used to use a ship that is called as USS Potomac for the recreational activities and for the rest purposes. However, when the World War II began, the US security, uh, we can say this, uh, US security forces, they were very much alarmed and they did not want to risk the life of president who is sailing on the ship. And that is why they wanted to establish an alternate place where US president that time can go for the recreational activity. And thus nearby Washington, as we discussed, 96 kilometers from Washington, a place that is called at that time Camp High Catoctin was chosen. However, this place, its name was changed to Shangri-La, first of all by the Franklin Roosevelt after the name of a utopian, utopian monastery that was mentioned in a book that is called as Lost Horizon that has been written by the James Hilton. However, when Dwight Eisenhower 
became the next president of United States of America. He did not very much like the name of Shangri-La because he thought that it is very fancy name. And thus, after his grandson, he named this Camp High Captain. Again, that was renamed as Shangri-La back to Camp David. So that is how we can understand the naming of Camp David has been done. Now, since that time, US president has hosted all most of the world leaders at Camp David. And as you can see, this is a snippet from 2012. When all the world leaders were going, were uh, basically went to USA to attend the G8 meeting at that time. Now G8 has been reduced to G7 because Russia was expelled uh, after it attacked Crimea in 2014. So they were watching the football game. But however, as we have discussed, the most significant meeting that we have talked about today is the meeting that happened between Jimmy Carter, Anwar Sadat, and the Menachem Begin. So let us try to understand the significance of Camp David Accord. But before that, let us take a brief look at the background in which Camp David Accords were signed. So first of all, if we talk about this entire issue is related to the Israel-Palestine dispute. So in 1947, basically we talk about the year 1947, that is also the year when India got independent from British. So till 1947, UK, United Kingdom was also administering the Palestine. However, in 1947, it referred the matter of Palestine to the United Nations because the reason was that UK first of all attempted to create a Jewish homeland in the Palestinian region for the uh, people, the Jewish people who were basically were migrating from Europe because of the, uh, we know that during World War II, we have the Adolf Hitler who is persecuting a lot of Jews. So that is why they are trying to migrate in this region and UK was also trying to establish a homeland for them. However, this attempt resulted into a failure because there was large scale protest and there was large scale protest not only from the public but also from the major Arabian countries. And thus, UK sent the matter or basically given referred the matter to the control of United Nations. Basically, if you talk about the concept of Jewish homeland, first of all, it has been mentioned in 1917 Balfour Declaration. And that is when the concept of that is from where the concept of Jewish homeland came. And that is what UK was trying to achieve here. However, in 1948, once UK basically uh, uh, ceded its control over the Palestine United Nations. Israel declared its independence or proclaimed its independence and that declaration of independence triggered one of the most important war that has happened in this area, in this area that is called as First Arab-Israeli War. As a result of First Arab-Israeli War, basically the Arabian countries such as Syria, Jordan, Egypt, they took control of Gaza Strip as well as West Bank. So, if you try to understand this on the map of this particular region, what we can see from here is that this is your Israel and this side near the Mediterranean Sea, you can see a small strip of landmass is there. This is referred as Gaza Strip and near the border of Israel and Jordan, which also borders the Dead Sea region, as you can see from here, we have the West Bank region. So, as a result of the first Arab-Israeli war, Jordan gained control over the West Bank and at the same time, it also took control. If you talk about Egypt and Syria, they took control of the Gaza Strip. So that was the result of the first Arab-Israeli war in 1948. However, in 1967, again, we have a war that is called as Six-Day War. And in this Six-Day War, the result basically, uh, uh, what you can say, the result that we see uh, uh, or the outcome that we see from this war was very, very different from what we have seen in the 1948. Now, as outcome of this war, Israel now occupied or took back those territory which it had lost in the first Arab Israel war. That is, Israel retook the control over the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and also it took control over another region of Syria that we refer as Golan Heights. Now, Golan Heights, if you look at this, it is situated in the Syrian land on the Israel's northeastern border. And also, apart from Golan Heights, Israel took control of a very, very important peninsula, as you can see from this map here that is called as Sinai Peninsula. So, as you can see, this is also a previous year prelims question actually that where is Sinai Peninsula situated. So, Sinai Peninsula is end of a peninsula that is jutting out in the Red Sea region surrounded by Egypt from the west, Israel from the east. So, Sinai Peninsula, Golan Heights, Gaza Strip, West Bank, all these four territories were then controlled as a result of 1967 Six-Day War. Within a six days, basically, war was over. That is why it is called as six day war. So, it is in this background, Camp David Accord was being signed, or basically, US was trying to achieve an amicable settlement between the Egypt and Israel. Thus, what happens 
Jimmy Carter basically took UN Resolution 242 of 1967 as a basis of signing of Cap Camp David Agreement. And what this UN Resolution 242 of 1967 basically asked? It asked Israel that it had to withdraw its troops from the occupied territories. Occupied territories means Golan Heights, occupied territory means Sinai Peninsula and thus also acknowledge the claim of sovereignty, territorial integrity and the political independence of every state in the region. What we mean by the every state in region, here it is referring to the Jordan, here it is referring to the Egypt, here it is referring to the Syria and also it is referring to the Palestine. And thus taking this as a basis, then there was an attempt that was made to sign a framework for settlement in the Sinai. So actually in informal term we call it as a Camp David Accord because it was signed in Camp David. However, the official name given to this accord is Framework for Settlement in the Sinai. And what was the main brief points, basic points of this framework? So first of all, as far as Israel is concerned, similarly Israel was asked to withdraw from the Sinai Peninsula and from the land that is acquired during the six day war in the West Bank region. If you remember, West Bank is situated near the border of Israel and Jordan near the Dead Sea area. So from Sinai Peninsula and West Bank region, Israel have to withdraw their forces. And what about Egypt and Jordan? So Egypt, Jordan and also Israel later on, they have to agree on modalities for establishing elected self-governing authority in the West Bank and Gaza. And the solution must recognize the legitimate right of the Palestinian people. So it is very, very important point of this agreement that this agreement is not very pro-Israeli agreement. It is This agreement is not very pro-Palestinian agreement rather than try to achieve amicable solution of the Israel-Palestine dispute. And thus, it has asked Israel to withdraw troops from the occupied territories. And also, it asked that Israel has to recognize the legitimate right of the Palestinian peoples and their just requirements. In this way, the Palestinians will participate in the determination of their own future, even whenever we have next agreement that happens. That was the overall goal during the 1978. However, if you talk about the success of this accord, it has been highly, if we talk about the success of this accord, it has been highly debated and both, if you talk about accord has both failures as well as successes. So, what is the failure of this accord? So, first of all, as you know, is still the question of Palestine, that what is the right of Palestine or the recognition of Palestine as a sovereign independent nation that is still has not been addressed and has not been achieved till date. And that is why you will see that both across the Gaza Strip as well as across the Western West Bank, the Israel and Palestinian troops keep on fighting with each other. We have this uh, Hamas guerrilla organizations are there. Uh, Hamas is basically considered as terrorist organization. So they keep on fighting a guerrilla warfare against Israel as well. And we have significant lo this launches of rockets that we see from both the sides. Similarly, Accords also made note of resolving the refugee problem that referred to the Palestinian refugee the wars, but not much progress has been made on that end as well. However, if we talk about the successes of this Accord, so obviously the Accord has achieved success in terms of basically uh, uh, increasing the bonhomie between the Arab world and the Israel world. And that is why Egypt has played a very critical role there because Egypt, Egypt uh, Egyptian leader Anwar Sadat was the one who was basically, uh, what we can say, uh, heading the uh, uh, delegation that led to the development of the Camp David Accord. And thus, what happened that there is an increasing bonhomie between the Israel and uh, Egypt. However, this was something that was not very much liked by the radical leaders and that is the reason why Anwar Sadat was later assassinated. And as an immediate effect of this uh, Camp David Accord, Egypt was actually thrown out of the Arab League as well. However, later on it has been readmitted. However, at present, if we talk about a growing number of countries, whether it is Egypt, whether it is the UAE, whether it is the uh, Qatar, we can say, all countries are trying to basically establish full scale diplomatic relations with Israel or are participating in trade with it. So, that has been the overall impact of the Camp David Accord. So, I hope the point, uh, what is the Camp David and where it is situated and what are the significance of the Camp David Accord, it is clear to you. That is all for this particular video. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with the full aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more social content. Thank you very much.